The topic is maxillary fracture. Now, you, as you know, this is a very important topic from oral surgery that you should know. Before starting what Leafort fractures is, I'm going to give the introduction to this maxillary fractures. So the most common cause for your fractures is for the mid face fracture is vehicle accidents. Now, before starting with the leaf foot fractures, I'm giving a brief about the applied anatomy of the maxilla. So maxilla, it forms the largest part of the middle third of the face. So this is your face. So it is divided into three parts, upper, upper third, middle third and the lower third. So in this middle third, this maxilla, it forms the largest part of it. The body of each maxilla it is hollowed by the maxillary sinuses. So as you know, there are this maxillary sinuses which are present on the either side of it. So it is hollowed. So your maxilla, it is hollowed or it is pneumatized by the maxillary sinus. Then the maxilla, it has four processes. These are frontal, zygomatic, alveolar, palatine. So this is your alveolar over here. This becomes your alveolar. Palatine is nothing but the palate. Then frontal is this frontal bone and zygomatic so this is your zygomatic this is your zygomatic so your maxilla it has four processes that are frontal zygomatic alveolar and palatine so the maxilla they are designed to absorb the masticatory forces now it's like your face it has many fragile bones and because of that it is more prone to fractures but now this fragile bones on the face it also has some strong bones which gives strength to the face and this mid face, it contains some tough frames of buttresses. So these are known as, so mid face, it has vertical buttresses and horizontal buttresses. Your face, it has many weak bones that are the fragile bones. So these fragile bones, they are surrounded by the thicker bones of the facial buttress system, which is responsible for the strength and stability. So the forces that are applied to the face, they are absorbed and they are transmitted by the buttress system. Vertical buttresses are three buttresses that is the nasomaxillary, then the next is the zygomatico maxillary, and third is the pterygo maxillary. This is the front view of the face, this is the side view of the skull. Now, this is your skull, this is the orbit, this is the alveolar bone of the maxilla. Over here, this is the external auditory meatus, this is the styloid process, foramen oval when you're seeing it based on the skull. Then over here, this is your lateral plate of the pterygoid process and this is the hamillus which is present. Then over here, there is this pterygopalatine fossa. Now which are these vertical buttresses as I said. So first, I am going to say about this pterygomaxillary. So this is your maxilla and this is your pterygoid bone. So the pterygomaxillary, so the area between, so the junction between these two, it forms the first vertical buttress that is the pterygomaxillary. The next is the zygomatico maxillary. This is your zygomatic arch and this is your zygomatic bone. So first, as we have seen, this is the pterygo maxillary. Next is the zygomatic, zygomatico maxillary. So this is your maxilla, this is your zygomatic arch and this is your zygomatic bone. So this becomes your second vertical buttress that is zygomatico maxillary. And the third one is nasomaxillary. So this is the nasal bone over here. Now in this diagram, this is the nasal bone. This is the frontal process of the maxilla. This is your maxilla, this is your zygomatic bone, this is the zygomatic arch, this is the frontozygomatic suture and this is your frontal bone. The third one is the nasomaxillary. So over here, through the nasal bone, so the junction between these two, so it is like the nasomaxillary suture. So your nasomaxillary suture, it becomes the third vertical buttress. So this is your third vertical buttress that is from the nasal and the junction between these two maxilla and the nasal nasal and the maxilla so junction between these two it becomes the third vertical buttress now moving on towards the horizontal buttress so now this is the diagram so this becomes the lower third buttresses and these are the mid face one so these are the mid face buttresses so first is the frontal bar so this is the frontal bar this is the frontal bone so basically this is the frontal bar which is the first horizontal buttress the next one is the orbital ribs this is the orbital ribs. So this is your second horizontal buttress. The third one is the maxillary alveolus. So this is your maxillary alveolus and palate. So it becomes the third horizontal buttress. And there's one more 
which is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. So this is the zygomatic process of the temporal. So this now there is more tendency of fracture in the areas of the strength concentration and the areas of weakness. So based on this factors, Lefort in 1901, he has described the classical pattern of facial fractures which is occurring through the junction of the horizontal and the vertical buttresses. Moving on towards the classification of the maxillary fracture. So there were various classifications which were given and the most commonly used one is the Lefort's classification of fracture. He experimented on the skull of the cadaver and he removed all the soft tissue of it and then what he did was he applied forces on it. So he applied low velocity forces on this skull and he classified the fractures depending upon the fracture lines which are classified as 1, 2 and 3. So this is nothing but the Lefort's fracture. Like the face, it is a complex structure. So it is not always common. So it is not always compulsory that you will get a fracture line depending upon this 1 or 2 or 3. So as it is a complex structure, you can get a combination. Mostly you will get a combination of two of them. Now your maxilla, it has right and left part. So you can see if there is a Lefort 1 on one side and you can see Lefort 2 on other side. So this can be the thing that you can see in maxillary fractures. It's not always you'll see proper fracture line of default one only. So you can get a combination of it. Then there were many other classification which were given. The other classification was given by Marciani. So he was the person who just modified the default fracture. And in that he included default four fracture two. Basically your four default fracture is nothing but it is default two or three, but with cranial bone fracture with cranial base fracture so this was the modification which was done by Marciani in 1993 then there are many other classification there was a classification which was given by Hendrickson and this was the classification for the pallet fracture then there's another classification which was given by Rowe and Williams in the year 1985 now it is dependent, so it is classified into two types, one which is involving the occlusion and one which is not involving the occlusion, that is the teeth and the alveolus. So I'm going to show you what these classifications are. So now I don't know whether it is visible or not properly, but these are the notes that I made during my final year. The first most commonly used classification is the trauma to the cadaver head and the removal of the soft tissue. That was what Lefort did and he classified it as default 1, 2 and 3. Then there was Erich classification as per the direction of the fracture. It was horizontal pyramidal transverse. So basically it is nothing but the default fracture but depending upon the name of the direction of the fracture. Then there was this depending upon the relationship of the fracture line to the zygomatic bone. If it is below the zygomatic bone or it is above the zygomatic bone. So below the zygomatic bone is known as subzygomatic. that is nothing but the default 1 and above the zygomatic is nothing but default 2 and 3. Then depending on the level of the fracture line, it is low level, mid level or high level. Then as I said, there is this third one that is Rose and Williams eye classification depending upon which involves the teeth and the alveolus and which involves and which do not involve. So these are the subgroups of it. But you should know like properly about the leaf force only. These are other classification. Like if it is asked in your exams, then you need to write about it. Then... Now, these are the vertical and horizontal buttresses which I have explained and this is the Marciani classification. So, what he did was, there are these various subgroups in every, like, for Lefort 1, there is Lefort 1A, there is Lefort 2, Lefort, in Lefort 2, there is Lefort 2A, Lefort 2B. So, these all are the classification, but you just have to remember, like, he just added this Lefort class 4 in which it is Lefort 2 plus 3 and there is this cranial brace fracture which is included in Marciani classification. And these are the classification, these are these lines which were given by McGregor and Campbell. So I'm going to explain now what these lines are. Because this can be asked as a short answer question or if you get a LAQ, then you can include this diagram. Now I'm going to show you which diagram it is in your answer. So your exam answer sheet, it should be presented in a very good way. So as I said, now you can include about this diagram in your LAQ. I'm not telling you to write or fill papers. So you don't have to like completely fill answer sheets. You have to write whatever appropriate is. So I'm going to give you an example of like how you should write your exam, how you should write your exam answers as. So for example, now, if this is a default fracture, so I have written this in the form of flowchart. 
Now over here, so the same leafwood one I have written in the form of paragraphs. So now you only tell me like which looks better, if this like this flowchart or the paragraphs. So this becomes a point, like how you should write your answers as, how your presentation of answers should be, how your presentation of answer sheet should be, because that will really help you a lot to get good marks. And even for classification, rather than writing in paragraphs, you can draw like this. So you can do the classification in a tabular form rather than just writing it in a form of paragraphs. And how you should write your exams as, your answers as. So the presentation, so your exam answer presentation, exam paper presentation, if you want, I'll make a video on it too. Just let me know about it. If you want, then I'll do that. So there are many points that you can add in your exam sheets if you're writing if you want to get good marks on towards the last part that is the investigation so in investigations you'll see you can take two types of investigation that is the radiographic examination and the next is the CT scan so in radiographic examination you can take various view that are the PA view that is known as Waters view or Cardwell's view or you can take a lateral view or a submental vertex view so th through this radiograph techniques you can detect about the maxillary fracture now what is this lines? Now as I said, I'm going to explain about this Mac Gregor and Campbell. So these two people in 1950 they described a system for examining the occipital mental film, which covers most of the sites of injury. So by following these lines, by when you're examining the occipital mental film. It reduces the chance of failing to detect the fracture so through this line it becomes like clear which type of fracture it is so you are not like failing to detect the fracture so these are the four lines so I'm going to tell you which four lines these are so the first line is this line so the first line it is across the zygomatico frontal suture so over here this is your zygomatico frontal suture this is your frontal bone and this is your zygomatic bone so the suture between these two is the zygomatico frontal suture so it crosses from the zygomatico frontal suture it passes from the superior margin of the orbit so your orbit it has the superior margin and the lower margin so it passes from the superior margin of the orbit through the frontal sinus the first line it is across the zygomatico frontal suture the superior margin of the orbit and the frontal sinus so this is your first line now the second line is the line it crosses the zygomatic arch zygomatic body inferior orbital margin and the nasal bone so this is your zygomatic arch so this is your zygomatic arch this is your zygomatic bone then so it follows from this zygomatic arch zygomatic bone inferior margin orbital margin inferior orbital margin and the nasal bone so this becomes your second line your first line was from here this is the second line now the third line is it passes from the condyle coronoid of the mandible and through the maxillary sinus so over here for example if your condyle and coronoid is present then it passes like this from the condyles coronoid and the maxillary sinus now the fourth line is it passes from the mandibular ramus and the occlusal plane so through the mandibular ramus and the occlusal plane so this is the fourth line now there was this fifth line which was introduced by Trapnel. so this is the fifth line and it is across the inferior border of the mandible from angle to angle so from angle this is your angle over here also this is the angle of mandible so it passes from the inferior border of mandible from angle to angle and this becomes your fifth line so this line it helps so these are the five lines which were given and this helps to detect the fracture properly now the other indirect sign of fractures is R. so this was the direct so you are taking a radiograph you are seeing what the fracture lines are the indirect ways of detecting the fractures is so there are three main signs that you'll see first is the soft tissue swelling if you'll see there's a soft tissue swelling then you should consider maxillary fracture as one of its reason the next can be there is opacification of the maxillary sinus so here are your maxillary sinus so it gets opacified so it can be the reason for the like this opacification it can be the reason because of this maxillary fracture the next reason can be soft tissue emphysema so it is very rare but it is a useful sign in the case of fracture which is involving the nasal cavity and paranasal sinuses and this emphysema it may be presented as 
मल्टीपल रेडियो लूसेंसी लाइक स्मॉल रेडियो लूसेंसी और देर वुड बी ओवरऑल इंक्रीज इन द रेडियो लूसेंसी ऑफ द सॉफ्ट टिश्यू सो दीज आर द इनडायरेक्ट साइंस ऑफ द फ्रैक्चर दिस वॉज द डायरेक्ट इन विच आई हैव सेड अबाउट द रेडियोग्राफिक एग्जामिनेशन एंड द नेक्स्ट इज द सिटी स्कैन सो दिस बिकम्स द मोस्ट रिलायबल वन इन विच यू कैन सी प्रॉपरली वेर द एग्जैक्ट वेर द फ्रैक्चर लाइन्स आर फ्रॉम वेर इट इज क्रॉसिंग सो वेर एक्जैक्टली द फ्रैक्चर लाइन्स इज and this was all about the introduction to the maxillary fracture now i'm going to cover in the further videos about leaf foot 1 2 and 3 and about them in depth like the fracture lines clinical features and even about the management of it and this was it for this video thank you so much